Hi everyone, this is Sean with Lightning Vapes. Now today we're going to be rebuilding the Aspire Nautilus bottom coil uh, head. Before we get started, I just want to run over some of the tools that we'll need to uh, get the job done. We have uh, here a pair of 4.5 inch uh, wire cutting pliers, a pair of 4.5 inch round nose uh, jewelry pliers, a uh, set of ceramic tweezers which are not necessary but they are recommended. We'll go over that uh, a little bit later. We have a uh, large butane torch, we also uh, offer a smaller uh, travel size torch with a adjustable stand, lock, and airflow, but the uh, larger torch will help us uh, better illustrate uh, the, the uh, process. We'll be using that today. We have some uh, Lightning Vapes 32 gauge Canthal along with some Lightning Vapes uh, 2 millimeter silica wick, a cardamizer and atomizer ohm meter uh, that will help us make sure that there are no shorts in our coil head before we uh, install that back onto the battery. Uh, also, we'll be, we'll be using uh, the Evic uh, Supreme today, and that's about that. Uh, everything that you see here, all the tools, except for the uh, Aspire Nautilus tank and the Evic Supreme, are available at lightningvapes.com. That's also including the Aspire Nautilus uh, quill head. All right, so let's get started. Uh, for the sake of keeping the video uh, as short as possible, I've gone ahead and removed the uh, the wick wire assembly from this unit. Typically this is how you would do it. You would remove the center bottom pin. You would then use the round nose pliers to remove the rubber insulator from the bottom. And then you would use the, uh, the, the uh, round nose pliers to push the wick wire assembly forward towards the top of the unit and then gently ply or pry out using the uh, using the pliers or a pair of tweezers. Um, it's important to start with a dry build. It's actually absolutely vital because we're going to be dry burning our coil later. It will taste like garbage if it's any bit wet. So uh, if you're using uh, a previously used coil, make sure to rinse it out with water, let it sit overnight, make sure that it's completely dry before we build. Uh, that being said, let's take a look at the inside of this uh, coil head. Now you'll notice there's two different uh, wicking channels that are adjacent to each other, they crisscross. Uh, one set of wicking channels, horizontally shown here, are uh, deeper recessed into the, uh, the coil head than the, uh, the top two. They're much more shallow. Uh, that is because uh, the wicks will uh, lay uh, crisscross in the assembly. This is very similar to the, to the ProTank uh, 3 dual coil uh, assembly. Uh, the biggest difference is that in the ProTank 3, the coils sit end over end, completely parallel. Aspire Nautilus, they'll be adjacent and crisscross. Um, so we're going to put that down for the moment. Um, as we get started, we're going to take some of our two millimeter uh, silica wick, so about two inches of it or so. This next step is not necessary, but I prefer it. Uh, what I do is I torch the silica wick with high heat. Uh, it becomes more rigid, more firm, and is much, uh, much easier to work with, in my uh, opinion, after being heat treated. Kind of blow it off so we can work with it in just a minute. We're going to take one revolution of the 32 gauge canthal from the uh, from the roll. As we start, there's something you want to be mindful of. You want to keep uh, one of the legs noticeably longer uh, than the other while wrapping. Uh, reason for that being, uh, we'll we'll get there in just a moment. So we're going to wrap the wire around eight times. We want the coil wraps to be as close to each other as possible. Okay, I'm going to straighten up these legs a bit. Now, if it's not perfect, 
don't worry, because the next step is going to uh, is going to address that. Now, if you've been eyeballing this assembly over here in the corner, you'll see that the, uh, the coils on that are very tightly uh, placed together, whereas this assembly, they're a little bit scattered. How we're going to fix that is we're going to use our uh, large butane torch. In the lock position, set it up stationary. We're going to take our ceramic tweezers and we're going to pinch the ends of the coil together like so. And then apply flame. heat, you'll find, will set them where the tweezers are placing them. I've done this to both sides of the coil, and the end product will look much, much tighter. <clears throat> and instead, will look something like this. Much tighter, much closer together. Okay, so now that we have our wick assemblies, you, you will repeat that, you'll need two uh, of these. What we're going to do is we're going to take our, uh, our coil head. We're going to insert the first of the two uh, coiled wick assemblies. now. Remember I mentioned that uh, you want one one uh, leg noticeably longer than, than the other. Um, we're going to insert the first hook assembly into the deepest into the deepest uh, notch, or rather set of notches. Uh, we're going to trim off some of the uh, the excess. This wick. And again, be mindful of the deepest notch. I see it right there. I know that it may be a little bit difficult to see, but I'll get a better zoom in here in just a uh, in just a moment. Okay, and there we are. So it's it's seated in there pretty well. We're going to take our second assembly uh, in an effort to have the, the two longest legs of the uh, two coils to, uh, closest together. I'm going to insert uh, the longest lead into the uh, into the bottom of the assembly. Well, I'm sorry, into the, into the top and in, into the bottom space available. It's right next to that coil. I'm going to straighten this leg up to make it uh, just a bit easier. Get better focus. There we are. It's the longest leg is him. I'm going to get our short leg. It's fighting me. There we are. Okay, and do the same thing uh, with this wig. We're going to trim off the excess. It should look something like that upon inserting. Okay, so gently pull these into the uh, more shallow of the two notches. Your assembly should look like that. Quills crisscrossing. There you have it. Now, for the bottom, we're going to take our two longest leads. We're going to uh, fold them off to uh, the side, apply just a little bit of force, not too much because you risk pulling the wick back through the assembly. We don't want that. We just want to make sure that there, uh, there's tension, that the, uh, the legs of the coil are as short as possible so as not to create any hot spots. Uh, next, we're going to take the, uh, the shortest of the two wires, insert them through the center of this uh, rubber 
insulator. Be much easier if I straightened the both of them first. Like so. You gently push the insulator very gently back into the assembly. There you go, tighten those uh, those legs up on the negative side. Now we're going to do the same thing on the uh, on the positive pin side. Right here, we're going to uh, fold these to the opposite side of the other leads. Squeeze, hold down, and we're going to uh, insert the bottom center pin. There we have it. Let's give one good last tug to make sure those legs are nice and tight. Uh, a lot of people use uh, fingernail cutters to uh, to really trim up the leads. Uh, the wire, I find it's just as easy with this particular unit to simply squeeze, wiggle back and forth, and eventually they'll they'll break off right at the uh, right at the bends. So you're left with no exposed uh, no exposed leads at the end. Very clean break. Okay, there you have it. Very clean. All right, so it's time now to install that into the uh, the base. Now with the configuration, eight wraps of a uh, 32 gauge rod, two millimeter wick, uh, times two wicks, we should yield something to the effect of 1.4 ohms of resistance if everything is. Uh, Okay, 1.5 to you, a little bit higher, 1.54, a little bit higher than I was uh, aiming for, but still functional, definitely not shorting. Okay. So I'm going to screw this back onto uh, our battery. I have this set at the maximum operating voltage of an uh, Ego uh, twist battery. It's 4.8 volts. Uh, so just so as to not leave the, uh, the folks at home with ego batteries in the dark, you can of course use more voltage, you can use less. Uh, it's really about preference. Uh, but here we are, we're going to give this a few pulses, we're going to press the, uh, the battery button. Yeah, it looks like we have a slight shorting issue. I'm going to try to uh, pull the top coil up a bit, make sure that it's not touching the bottom. That looks much better. There we are. The heat moves out evenly from the center of the coil outward. And that should be good uh, good news. Now what just happened there can happen very easily if, if uh, those two crisscrossing uh, coils touch each other. There needs to be at least a little bit of space in between them. Now uh, with the two easers I was able to ply, or pry the, uh, the top coil gently off of the, uh, the underlying coil so that they're no longer touching. Okay, so let us add uh, some juice. I'm going to be using some uh, Vape Addict, uh, down for a 40. It's a very nice green apple flavor. It's one of my favorites. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, prime the wick assembly just by dripping a few drops around the edges. You don't want to get this liquid into the center of the unit. There we are. Just a little bit of liquid around the sides. There we have it. Let's give it a fire. That is delicious. Okay. Well, folks, that concludes uh, concludes the tutorial. Uh, for today. Again, uh, everything you see here, save for the uh, Evic Supreme and the Nautilus tank, uh, can be purchased at lightningvapes.com. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.